God, the most beneficent, the most merciful. All praise be to Him, the Creator and the Sustainer. I begin in His name. I begin in the name of Allah and I send my peace and my blessings upon Muhammad and his holy progeny. And I send my condolences to the Imam of my time, Imam al Mahdi al Muntadar, may Allah hasten his reappearance on the martyrdom of the tragic event of Fatima al Zahra, peace be upon her, when they squeezed my lady Fatima between the door and the nail. Our time is very limited and we want to go through the historical events that occurred. I narrated to you before that the attack on the house of my lady Fatima was not one or two attacks, but it was in fact three attacks followed by one attack after. It was three attacks plus one more. And we spoke about the Ummah of Rasulullah and about the weakness and how weak the Ummah of Rasulullah, peace be upon him and his holy family was. This Ummah of Muhammad in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith that is agreed upon by all the schools that after me, O Ummah, my nation, you will follow the footsteps of the Umam before you, of the nations before you, foot by step, increment by increment. And when Hudayfat ibn al-Yaman was asked, O oh, Aba Abdullah, is hypocrisy today greater? Or was it worse at the time of Rasulullah, peace be upon him and his holy family? He said, by Allah, by Allah, hypocrisy today is greater. Because at the time of Rasulullah, this hypocrisy and this hatred and this enmity towards Ahl al-Bayt, peace be upon them, was inside. Today it's revealed. It was not long after the passing away and the martyrdom of Rasulullah, peace be upon him, when the inqilab, when the revolt, when the revolution happened, they left, they left the burial and the shrouding of Rasulullah's body and went to discuss worldly actions and desires and appoint a humanely appointed leader. And when Ali was asked, he told them, do you want me to leave the shrouding of Rasulullah and talk nonsense amongst you? And Abu Bakr, and Abu Bakr, do you know what he said when he was asked to come aid the Ahl al-Bayt in shrouding Rasulullah? He said, you had Ali ibn Abi Talib, you have your commander, go. Go and let Ali ibn Abi Talib and the Ahl al-Bayt deal with him. There is a lot of history to narrate to you. <clears throat> and I do not have the time to narrate the entire history. So we will begin talking about the attacks. The attacks that happen on my Fatima's house. On my lady Fatima's house. So please bear with me. Bear with me as we take this heart-wrenching journey. Well, we speak about how these treacherous animals did to my lady Fatima, peace be upon her. The first attack, the first attack on the house of Fatima, when Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon him, completed the burial and the shrouding of Rasulullah, he had a group from Banu Hashim and from his companions in the house. They were Al-Abbas, Al-Zubair, Al-Miqdad, Talha, and others. They were in the house of Amir al-Mu'mineen, peace be upon him. Of course, Umar ibn al-Khattab found out about this jam'ah, about this political stance in the house of Fatima, because Fatima took a political stance against Abu Bakr and Umar's government. She gave herself for the wilayah of Ali ibn Abi Talib. 
when Umar heard about this, he went to Abu Bakr. And then he told Abu Bakr that they have gathered at the house of Ali to revolt against you. And your government is still new. Your government is still weak. Then he told Umar to go to the house of Fatima. They came and he said, pledge allegiance to Abu Bakr. Umar came to the house of Fatima. Al-Zubayr took out his sword, attempting to slash Umar. But his sword was reached by Khalid ibn al-Walid, taken from him. They broke the sword and Umar's language, listen, he says, get the dog and save us from his evil. This is the language of these people. This is the kind of language that they speak about. They took the sword, gave it to Umar, Umar broke the sword. Again, he said, pledge allegiance to Abu Bakr. The people have elected him and by Allah, if you refuse, we will deal with you with the sword. This is the siyasa. This is how Umar ibn al-Khattab's politics is run. With the sword, with anger, with unuf. He does not have the siyasa of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. Some weak-minded people in this group did ple pledge allegiance to Abu Bakr. Ali alayhi salam refused. Let me read you the nas of Ali ibn Abi Talib. He said, I am more worthy of this matter than him. You should pledge allegiance to me instead. You took this matter from the Ansar and argued with them that they were the relatives of the Prophet of Allah and you took it from the family by force. Did you not claim to the Ansar that you deserve this more than them because of your relation to the Prophet of Allah? So they gave you the lead and the case. I argue with you by the same argument you proposed. I am the most worthy of this position. I am the son of Abu Talib, the uncle of Rasulullah. I am the most righteous, the first to believe in him, the best fighter who fought many mushrikeen, the most knowledgeable of the book and the sunnah, the most knowledgeable of this religion. Be just if you fear Allah. If your argument is that they are more awla because they are family. Well, I, Ali ibn Abi Talib, is more awla to you. The conversation went on. Of course, Abu Ibadah, Abu Ibadah gave his argument. He said, Ya Ali ibn Abi Talib, you are young. And Abu Bakr is older than you. You are young and Abu Bakr is older than you. You might not handle this new leadership. This is the argument of the Mukhalifin. Ali was young. He was about 33 to 30 years old at that time. What could he do with the government? A young child? This man is learned. He's a scholar. He's old. He has wisdom. MashaAllah. After this, Amir al-Mu'mineen refused and he went inside the house and he followed the wasiyah of Rasulullah, which is to collect the Qur'an. To collect the Qur'an in the tanzeer that it was sent down upon Muhammad, peace be upon him and his holy family. And this was on a Wednesday, meaning a couple, two to three days after the martyrdom of Rasulullah, peace be upon him and his holy family. At this point, Umar again came to the house of Lady Fatima. This is the second time that Ibn al-Khattab comes to the house of Lady Fatima. He says to Fatima, O oh Fatima, if these individuals gather with you, then I will command that the house will shall be burned and you in it. Or it shall be destroyed while you are in it. Fatima alayhi salam stood by the door. She says, I do not know any people that come for something worse than you. You left the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam dead in our hands and you took this matter amongst yourselves. You did not ask us or give us our due rights. This is Fatima to Zahra, peace be upon her. Oh Shia of Al-Muhammad, why don't you learn to be like Sayyidah Fatima? Umar came to Abu Bakr and he said to him, are you not going to destroy 
or are you not going to bring this person to give allegiance to you? He told, he tells Abu Bakr that without the allegiance of Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon him, your government is nothing. So you must force Ali ibn Abi Talib to come. You see how cunning these people are? Abu Bakr said, then we will said Qunfud. Qunfud is Faddun Ghalid. Min at tulaqa He said, go and tell Ali. Go and tell Ali, answer the Caliph of the Prophet of Allah. Qunfud went. He spoke to Ali ibn Abi Talib. Ali sent him back and told him to tell them, the Prophet of Allah did not appoint a Caliph other than me. You are quick, O oh Abu Bakr, to lie about the Prophet of Allah. In a hadith, Abu Bakr said, Yes, truly, Rasulullah did not appoint me as a caliph. Subhanallah, even Abu Bakr himself testifies. Because the Mukhalifin today have no nas for the Khilafah of Abu Bakr at all. All they have is that democratically the people chose them. Now, after this incident, the night came and Ali ibn Abi Talib Salamullah Aliya took Fatima to Zahra on his mule and he took the hands of Al Hassan and Al Hussein, peace be upon them, and he went towards the houses of the Ansar and the Muhajireen and began asking them for help, telling them, Come to me tomorrow, shaving your heads and pledging your allegiance to me. They went to every single house knocking on the door, only four answers, Salman said. Four answered. Some of them were so rough and they said to Fatima to Zahra, O oh, daughter of Muhammad, if you came to us first, we would have pledged allegiance for you. You see, everything about them is worldly desires. The next attack. The next attack. Umar goes to Abu Bakr and he tells him there are still some people in the house of Ali ibn Abi Talib. We have to get them out. He tells him go and take some people with you. Umar comes to the house of Fatima to Zahra. He says, Nafs Umar, by the one who holds Umar's life, you will get out of here. You will bring Ali ibn Abi Talib out or I will burn it with those who are inside. I will burn the house and whoever's inside the house. Somebody told them, Ya Ibn al-Khattab, in fil bayti Fatima. He said, Wa in? In the house is Fatima. He says, I don't care. This is the second attack. He threatened already more than once. My dear brothers and sisters, threatening a believer, a believing man and a believing woman is enough to anger Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you come and threaten my lady Fatima now the introduction to the final attack Umar became furious and he said to Abu Bakr what stops you from standing from sending someone after him to tell him to come and pledge allegiance if you do not do that then I will Umar ran out again his normal self his normal characteristics Round outside calling for help. Answer the Khalif of Allah. The horses came and the men came and they all readied themselves for battle. It is narrated approximately 300 people or more came to the house of Fatima. He came to him and he said, I have gathered for you horses and men, O Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr said, Who should we send them with? Umar said, Send Qunfud. He is rude and harsh and gross. He is from the freed captives. Send him with people to aid him as well. Umar said to Qunfud, listen, take them out of the house. If they go out or else gather the firewood by the door, let them know if they do not come out to pledge allegiance that you will set the house on fire. Qunfud went to Ali ibn Abi Talib and Sayyida Fatima and Ali, Ali ibn Abi Talib refused to let anybody in. Qunfud went back to Abu Bakr and then he told them we were not allowed in the house. Umar told him go. If they allow you to enter the house then do it. And if they do not allow you then enter without permission. 
They went again and said the Fatima was at the door. She said, shame on you. Shame on you to enter my house without my permission. The men went back and with them Qunfud again. And the man said to him, she said such and such. So we were ashamed to enter the house of Fatima. Now the final attack. Umar got very angry and he said, why do we care about the woman? Listen to the way he talks about Fatima al-Zahra. Why do we care about the woman? He ordered the people around him to come and collect firewood. They collected firewood and Abu Bakr said to Umar, get him to me in the worst way possible. Be violent towards Ali ibn Abi Talib. Get them out and if they refuse, then fight them. Umar went out with a large group of people of the companions from the Muhajireen and Ansar and the freed captives and the hypocrites of the past Arabs and the rest of the parties. And like I said, there was an army of 300 to 400 people awaiting to attack the house of Fatima to Zahra, peace be upon her. They gathered their torches, they gathered the firewood and then they began to get ready. They came towards the house. They came towards the house and Umar as well had a torch in his hand. Someone said to Umar, he said, Fatima is inside. He said, I will soon meet with Fatima. I will soon meet with Fatima and deal with Fatima. I'll read to you the maqtal here. They had made up their minds and they would not leave until the house is burnt. They came with their horses and we can hear the army. Fatima says, I can hear the horses' hooves and the cries of the horses coming towards my house. The narrators say, we can hear the voices of the horses, the steps of their feet and the grinding of their teeth. Fatima was behind the door. She had tied around her head a band and her body was very weak due to the loss of Rasulullah, peace be upon him. When she heard them coming closer, she closed the door thinking they will not enter without permission. Fatima, they will not enter without permission. They began knocking on the door very hard. And they began calling out Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon him. Come pledge allegiance to Abu Bakr. Come pledge allegiance to Abu Bakr. Umar said, O oh, Ibn Abi Talib, open the door. By Allah, if you do not open the door, we will burn it with the fire. Get out, O oh Ali. Get out. Get out and do what the Muslims have agreed upon. Fatima alayhi salam got behind the door. She said, O oh, tyrants, you liars, what are you saying? What do you want? Umar said, O oh, Fatima, O oh, Fatima. She said, What do you want, O oh, Umar? He said, What is the matter with the son of your uncle? He sent you to answer and sat behind the veil. She said, You tyrant, you criminal. I have come out to make a stance against you and every deviating, misleading person like you. He said, leave the vanities and the stories of women, O Fatima. Let Ali come out. She said, no love and no honor. Do you scare me? Since you have parted with the devil, O Umar, for the party of the devil is weak. He said, if he does not get out, I will bring the burning firewood and I will burn the house down and those who are in it. Or Ali gets taken to pledge allegiance. She said, O oh, Umar, what is the matter with you? Why do you not leave us alone? He said, open the door or we will burn down the house with you in it. She said, you will burn down the house and we are in it. He said, Wallah, by Allah or Ali ibn Abi Talib will pledge allegiance. She said to him, woe unto you, O Umar. What is this audacity on Allah and his prophet? You want to finish his progeny from the world and turn off the light of Allah? He said, enough, O Fatima, Muhammad is not present, nor did the angels bring the command and the prohibition from Allah. And Ali is nothing but just one of the Muslims. So choose, so choose if you want that he gets out to pledge allegiance to Abu Bakr. She said while crying, O oh Allah, to you I complain the loss of my prophet and your messenger and your sincere friend. This nation is turning its heels back upon us and has taken our rights and has oppressed us. Umar said, O oh Fatima, leave the foolishness of women. Verily Allah did not grant you prophethood and, and successorship. 
she said to him, O oh, Umar, do you not fear Allah Almighty? You enter my house and attack me. And that is when Umar ibn al-Khattab ordered for the firewood to be put around the house. Fatima alayhi salam called out, O oh, Father, O oh, Apostle of Allah, do you see what I have received from Ibn Abi al-Khattab and Ibn Abi Quhafa? Some people heard the voice in Fatima and began to cry and left. Yet Umar came with a large group of men. He asked for the fire to come and begin by setting the door on fire. The fire burned the wooden door. The smoke entered the house. Qunfud put his hand inside the hole that was created by the fire. Fatima alayhi salam grabbed the door handles to prevent him from opening it. She said, I ask you for the sake of Allah and my father, the Prophet of Allah, leave us alone. Umar grabbed the lash from Qunfud and he began to hit the upper arm of Fatima to Zahra. The lash wrapped itself around the hand of Fatima and it became like, like an armlet, like a black armlet. Umar hit the door with his, with his foot and kicked it while Fatima alayhi salam was standing behind the door. He started to push her in a very ferocious and violent fashion. He began to kick the door with his foot and he squeezed her between the door and the nail began to pierce his ribs and broke her ribs. She began to scream. She began to scream and ask for Rasulullah. Ya Abata, where are you? She used the back of the wall as protection for her back. And that is when Ali ibn Abi Talib, salamullahi alayhi, got out of his room. His eyes bloodshot and red and he was unarmed. He took his cloak and covered her and he took her close to her chest and he said, O oh, Fudda, your lady, take her, take from her that what the woman has taken from each other. Take Fatima. Take Fatima for she has miscarried my son al muhassin Take him and bury him in the house. Ali alayhi salam jumped like a lion towards Umar, took him by his collar. He shook him to the ground and hurt him. He broke his nose and when he was about to kill him, he remembered the wasiyah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. That if you find people to aid, then you revolt against them. Oh Ali. <laughs> They have to be patient. The greatest oppression that happened is not the ribs of Fatima. The greatest oppression is the fact that Ali ibn Abi Talib had to be patient. He was on the ground. He was on the ground and they put around him a rope and began to drag him throughout his house. From his own house they dragged him out. Fatima alayhi salam came after them. She, she stood in front of Ali ibn Abi Talib in the way of Ali ibn Abi Talib and they let go of him. Umar said to Qunfud, go and slash Fatima with your lash and they hit her on the hand and they hit her on the back and these athar stayed on her body. They took Ali to the masjid they took Ali ibn Abi Talib to the masjid and Fatima alayhi salam came with the shirt of Rasulullah on her head. Ali ibn Abi Talib told Salman, go to Fatima right now. If she goes to the grave of Rasulullah and she begins to cry to Allah and pray to Allah, Wallah, Wallah, Medina will be engulfed this second because the anger of Allah will come upon Medina. Salman went and she told him, Ya Binta Muhammad, do not do this. Do not pray on them or this entire city will be engulfed. I don't know what more to tell you. Fatima went through much more oppression, but it's very hard to read these. It is very difficult to read these ahadith. And I apologize for my shortcomings. And I apologize if I misquoted anything. And insha'Allah, we will continue in the next episode and we will see the stance of our Imams, peace be upon them, on what the pain that they narrate about their mother, Fatima al Zahra. Peace be upon you. My Lady Fatima, 
And may Allah hasten the reappearance of your son, Al Muntadar Al Mahdi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.